Daniel 5 is the chapter where we get the cliche, the writing on the wall from. This chapter takes place much later than the last four chapters. Actually, the visions in chapters 7 and 8 came before the events of this chapter and chapter 6. But because of the historical nature of the first six chapters and the prophetic nature of 7 through 12, they are grouped accordingly. Daniel is an old man now. King Nebuchadnezzar died roughly 23 years earlier, and there was a few other kings in between, and it turns out that Belshazzar was actually only the second in command. His father, Nabonidus, was the actual king, but he was away from Babylon for most of his reign and left his son, Belshazzar, in charge. Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine, and praised the gods of gold, and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. Belshazzar hosts a drinking party, and decides he wants to drink out of the vessels taken from the temple in Jerusalem. Those vessels were meant for holy service to God, and this drunkard wants to flagrantly defile them for all to see and partake. This was an open mockery of the God of Israel. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand, and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees smote one against another. Belshazzar actually sees the fingers writing on the wall, lit up by the candlestick for all to see. This was a major supernatural event that would severely scare anybody. Belshazzar was literally shaking in his boots. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Belshazzar was the second in command. That's why he offered the position of third ruler to whomever could interpret the writing. Did he go to Daniel first, the guy who successfully interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's dreams only decades ago? Of course not. He went to his pagan wise men. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. And none of the wise men were wise enough to interpret it. Now Belshazzar is even more scared, and everyone at the party was astonished at this great mystery. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house. And the queen spake and said, O king, live for ever, let not thy thoughts trouble thee nor let thy countenance be changed. There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar thy father the king, I say thy father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams, and showing of hard sentences, and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. The queen knew about Daniel and his history with Nebuchadnezzar. Why didn't anybody else? She suggests Daniel will be able to interpret the writing, and they call him in. Then was Daniel brought in before the king. And the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel which art of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Jewry? 
I have even heard of thee, that the Spirit of the gods is in thee, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. Notice he doesn't say the Spirit of God. He claims Daniel has the spirits of the gods. Belshazzar just thought of him as another pagan wise man. And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But they could not show the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of thee that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Now if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about thy neck and shalt be the third ruler in the kingdom. My wise men couldn't do it. Tell me what it says on the wall over there, and I'll make you my vice president. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself, and give thy rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king, and make known to him the interpretation. I don't want to be your vice president. I'll tell you what it says for free. O thou king, the Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom, and majesty and glory and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whom he would, he slew, and whom he would, he kept alive, and whom he would, he set up, and whom he would, he put down. It was God that made Nebuchadnezzar king of the world. But when his heart was lifted up, and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beasts, and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointeth over it whomsoever he will. Daniel retells the story of Daniel 4, pointing out that pride was Nebuchadnezzar's problem, but he eventually repented of it. And thou his son, O Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this, but hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. And they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives, and thy concubines have drunk wine in them. And thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. And the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified. Interesting. Belshazzar knew what happened to Nebuchadnezzar, but didn't learn a thing from it. He wouldn't humble himself, and instead decided to insult the God of Israel by drinking from the temple vessels. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Many, many, tekel, ufasen. This is the interpretation of the thing. Many, God hath numbered thy kingdom, and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances, and art found wanting. Peres, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Mene was written twice, but it's never explained why. The words Upharsin and Peres both come from the same Aramaic word. I have no idea why two different English words are used. But notice that the interpretation of each word seems to point to judgment against Babylon, not just the last word, because of the phrases, and finished it, and found wanting. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, and put a chain of gold about his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. In that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain, and Darius the Midian took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old. Even though Daniel didn't want it, 
Belshazzar gave him the promised rewards for interpreting the writing anyways. This event actually took place on the very last day of the Babylonian Empire. Daniel was a victim of the Babylonian Empire destroying Jerusalem in his youth, and now he's made third ruler of Babylon on its last day. Talk about king for a day. Belshazzar was killed that very night, and thus the second beast empire of the Medes and Persians began. <laughs>